Uh, again, my name is Dave Furst from IndyCar and the NTT IndyCar Series. Great to be back and great to see everyone back at the Milwaukee Mile uh, on this Monday here. Um, uh, he is the chairman of the Pinsky Corporation, owner of Pinsky Entertainment, IndyCar, and the NTT IndyCar Series. We say good morning to Mr. Roger Pinsky. Good morning, Roger. Well, just announced by the Wisconsin State Fair Park and Pinsky Entertainment, the return of the IndyCar Series to the famed Milwaukee Mile as part of the 2024 NTT IndyCar Series schedule marks the first IndyCar Series race at the mile since 2015. Uh, but it's not just not just one race in 2024. It's the first time in the track's history we be hosting two IndyCar Series races in one special Labor Day weekend set for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, August 30th through September 1st. And if that wasn't enough, uh, the timing of that weekend is going to be crucial for the 2024 NTT IndyCar Series Championship as it will lead directly into the season finale just two weeks later down the streets of Nashville for the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix and the celebration of the 2024 champion. Uh, the rising stars of the sport will also be competing that weekend on the super fast one mile oval located just outside here. The Indy Next by Firestone Series will also be making their return since 2015. So we look forward to seeing the rising stars return here at the mile as well. Finally, the Milwaukee Mile uh, IndyCar Series doubleheader will air and be available nationally on Saturday, Labor Day weekend. Fans can watch it on Peacock. And on Sunday, they'll be able to watch it on USA Network, along with Peacock, with additional coverage extending to the, well, 223 global markets in 142 countries, thanks to our global network TV partners. We'll start with Roger Pinsky, and, and Roger, again, good morning. Your interest in returning to the Milwaukee Mile is certainly well documented. What is it about this legendary facility that you've been coming to for years and years and years? What is it that compelled you uh, to bring the series and officials uh, back in 2021. Well, first let me uh, thank uh, the governor for getting behind this project. We had a chance to get together him almost a year ago. We talked about it earlier to talk about uh, the chance to come back here and certainly, Sherry, you know, with you and your team, uh, be able to look at the track. And uh, I think there's a huge commitment here, you know, from the state and certainly the Wisconsin Fair Board, John Dingling, the chairman. And we got together and talked about what we need to do to bring it to the current standards to have an Indy car race here, the commitment from the state, and certainly the fair board has given us that opportunity. But for us, it is a series, we're trying to be different. And I think the diversification, that's what it is. And we're going to have six ovals uh, next year with one more than we had this year. I think it's important as we get ready to be driving for Indianapolis 500, which is obviously our premier event, but also with our road races and also the street races that we have around the country. So to me, this opportunity was uh, really obvious. It's in our backyard. We have a tremendous amount of, of fans in this part of the country that love street car racing. We talk about it. My understanding, I talked to the governor, it was 1939 when they had the first race here. So I'm not sure exactly what we ran there at that time. <laughs> I know it's going to be a little more modern. And, and having, uh, you know, Scott Dixon here, who's been a six-time champion, and David exactly. Lucas, obviously, I think they understand that what this means to us. This is this is our DNA, mobile racing. We love to go racing on the streets and also certainly uh, on the fixed road courses. But uh, this opportunity for us, is we look from an IndyCar standpoint, to create a bigger footprint, you know, within the sport, television coming out of these types of mobiles is amazing to pass in the competition and I'm sure that Scott and David can talk about it but for me from the standpoint this is a great opportunity and we're trying to build the IndyCar series. Lots of competition out there today but this to me will give us a crowding, really crowding opportunity to take this series to the next level and guess what? Double points that weekend. The drivers can talk about that. You can come into this race, right? Scott leading, come up here. If you don't really be able to compete here and, and make it a dent in the points. This is a chance to do that. So it's going to be exciting, and I think uh, it's going to mean a big difference in this race coming up next year. So for me personally, uh, it's a great commitment, but it's a commitment. It's a team. It's not just IndyCar. You're following it. It's the state. It's the fair board and all the people that are in this market here. And that really, I want to thank uh, everyone that's committed to this. So we're very excited to cover it. 
that you first. You get behind it. Very important to leave it. Thank you. Sherry, uh, again, uh, thank you for hosting us here today. And I certainly know folks here know Wisconsin uh, State Fair Park annually hosts one of the most popular state fairs in, in the entire country. Uh, the IndyCar Delaware weekend will take place just a couple weeks after the state fair in 2024. State Fair Park team uh, will serve as the race promoter uh, while hosting the event beginning next year. Just talk to how excited you are coming off of a great state fair and to double down by hosting the IndyCar series for a couple of races in 2024. Yes, well, we are thrilled to welcome IndyCar back to the Milwaukee Mile. Um, there's just so much that we feel that we can offer here. Wisconsin State Fair Park has a very talented team. We actually um, have just over a million people that attend our fair annually, as well as our year-round events bring in another million people during the year, so we certainly know the events. And with our talented team, we have some really big new ideas for this event. We think that we can expand the footprint and help encompass more of our vendors that offer some unique food and beverage options, um, as well as some programming that we'll put into this as well, and that will help people, all of our race fans can come and enjoy this as a family-friendly event as well through the health of the event. Awesome. We can't wait. I know. Uh, speaking of those that can't wait, uh, we do want to recognize some of the State Fair board members in attendance. Uh, give you a shout out as well. Board Chairman John Yingling is here. John, thanks for being here. Uh, Wisconsin Secretary of Tourism Ann Sayers is here. Uh, Deputy Secretary of the Department of Tourism Paul Hammer is here. And uh, Paul Zeeler is here. Thank you so much for being a part of this announcement. <laughs> are looking forward to it. Uh, those two at the very end, I know, are looking forward to it as well. Uh, again, Scott Dixon, six-time NTT IndyCar Series champion, won here at the mile, not once, uh, but twice. First did it in the Indy Next by Firestone Series, formerly known as Indy Lights. Uh, that was back in 2000, and uh, he scored a very memorable IndyCar Series win here as well in, in 2009. Scott, we know you love ovals. We know you love the history of this sport. Uh, it should be a lot of fun in 2024 coming back to the mile. Yeah, I think all of us were, were definitely extremely excited for the announcement. Uh, some of us heard the whispers of it uh, coming back on the schedule. I know it's been talked about for maybe the last year or two. Uh, a tidbit, I think the first time I won here, David wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that, that, that gives us the span of uh, you know history I've had at this place. Um, some, some great results here, maybe the win, but then I've also uh, had some records. I think I destroyed two cars in four laps and actually didn't make the race from the set home. So uh, some mixed feelings back in the earlier days, but uh, this is huge. And I think as you know, Roger touched on, the timing of this, uh, timing of this event is going to be very special. You know, a double header, it's big points on the, on the, on the table before we go into the season finale and for the championship fight. So, um, I think I'm, you know, especially, uh, you know, really pumped about that and, and where it's going to fall on the schedule. But it's so good to be back here in Milwaukee. A lot of great memories from this race, um, and obviously a, a great area for our fans. So uh, definitely excited to, to see it back on the schedule. And, and I know that you know everybody up here is going to want to, to do the best job possible, and hopefully we can you know, pack the place out and put on a great show for everyone. Good time, Labor Day weekend. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. And, and, and finally, before we open it up for questions. Uh, again, someone who grew up just uh, 90 minutes or so uh, down the road here. Is this a home game for you? I don't know, David. Yes, yes. This you is very it. much uh, a home, home track is going to be uh, that sort of feeling. Uh, I'm super excited for, for what's coming, especially being a doubleheader. Um, you know, short ovals is kind of something that we've had a lot of fun in and a lot of success. And I think the racing in IndyCar, like Roger said, is something very special and unique to our series. So it's very good to have two more come around, especially here at the Milwaukee Mile. So I think me, Scott, and, and the rest of the crew are going to have a lot of fun and put on a good show. Dave Coleman here in the front row. Dave, great to be back, and uh, great to see you here in Milwaukee. Front row. Thanks. Sherry, you said big new ideas. Would you care to expand on that a little bit? Well, I mean, I think that we understand we need a bigger footprint. So we are looking for those that are local and are familiar with our harvest fair. That's sort of um, what we are planning to follow, kind of that footprint, where it really brings out our Central Park area. There's a lot of area for programming. And as I mentioned, some of our local vendors that have some um, fun and unique offerings will be able to open. In the past, it's always been along Grand, uh, Grand Sand Avenue, which is right outside of the track. So we're trying to go more into the fair and, and 
have more of that festival feel. A lot of our vendors bring in their own music acts, so we're hoping that they'll do that as well. Um, so just kind of that festival type feeling is what we're looking for. Third or fourth resurrection we've had in the last, since Scott won. Um, <laughs> This place has had a hard time kind of getting over the hump, getting over that 15,000 or whatever. The best days were more than 20 years ago. Um, what makes you think you can succeed not just once, but on back-to-back -back days as far as getting the turnover? Well, look, uh, it's part of our, it's uh, you know, obviously a key part of our, our schedule. But more important, I think, is, uh, is Pensacola Entertainment you know, took over the series and operates the Speedway, I think we come in with a team of experienced people that we can partner you know, with Sherry and her team here at the, at the fairground. Before you hit promoters coming in and coming in and coming out, but uh, you know, we're committed. You know, we've invested heavily in the track at Indianapolis and also certainly in the series, and it's important that we take these series to places that are long-staying capabilities that you have here. You've got a great track, you drive in here this morning, the place is clean, and one of the areas that we like so much is we have this wonderful convention center that the state has provided here at the park. And we'll have all of our chalets, all of our entertainment, you know, for our sponsors and people like that can really set up there. So we see that's going to be a great entertainment, especially as we come down to the end of the series, be able to use that for what it's built for to bring fans into the state and certainly for tourism. And we'll use that as a key. Also, we're looking, is there an opportunity to have entertainment? You know, we have the opportunity here with an with a entertainment area here at, at the fairgrounds, and potentially maybe Saturday night we can have some music. We haven't committed that yet. Uh, you know, we're working a number of sponsors. We've touched base with are very interested to be part of this. We haven't announced anything at this point, but I think it's our experience. As you know, we were in the Speedway business for a long time with Michigan and California and all over the country here, and then to be able to come here and put this under our control in conjunction as a partnership with the Wisconsin Fair Board, I think it works out. I mean, we got the capital to do it, but even more important when we step back and you look at the track and the money that's been allocated by the state funding in order to take it to the next level from a safety perspective and also for a fan, I think we're doing that also. So those are all things, Dave, that had to happen before we could come here and say it's gotta be sustainable. And then for Roger and Scott, you guys know the history of this series and the history of this track and its legacy in the sport of racing. Just what does this place mean to you both as someone who's been an owner, someone who's been a racer, just the, the history of this place? Well, let me let me answer it, you know, as far as an owner is concerned with my racing hat on. I mean, you think Rex Mays and Bettenhaus and some of the greater greatest Roger Ward racing up here, these are the great names in the sport. And it was always uh, Scott right after Indy, they used to come Obviously, he would come here to Milwaukee and run, and, and to me, it was just part of the DNA of the series, and we kind of lost that. And I think that's one thing we're trying to do as an ownership group to bring this back, and I think this just solidifies our involvement in the sport and the diversity, which I talked about earlier, that we can have the fastest mile oath and the fastest oath not only here, but go just not too far away to Indianapolis, and I think this is certainly critical. And if we're going to run it into Indianapolis, just think about it. We need the drivers like David to be able to compete on a mile racetrack before they go to a place where you're qualifying. As Scott and his team did this year, 234 miles an hour. So also it's a training ground when you think about it for all of the drivers as we go forward. So it, it fits all the, all the check, all the boxes really for this. Yeah, totally agree. I think, you know, for, for a driver's standpoint, you know, for me, the love of, and passion for, car racing was the diversity, right? The short track local super speedways, road courses, street courses. Um, and we kind of lost a lot of the ovals off the schedule. So to get back to that, you know, my first year in Indy Lights, you know, there were six ovals and six road courses. Um, so to come back to fundamentally what is part of the DNA of the Indy car, I think is, you know, important in moving forward. So I love these tracks, they're a lot of fun. You know, they're the action packed, you know, the fans, the fans will have a ton of, a ton of fun. And it's probably changed a little bit from the last time we were here. You know, the, 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 the cars and the performance and actually the raceability has got a lot better as well. So the show will be fantastic. Steve McGarvey, the Associated Press. First for Scott, you say you had heard the whispers that might be coming back here. What was it that you kind of just missed about having an event here and just 
what was the reception like among the drivers about the possibility of coming back when this rumors started? I think it, it felt more back onto you know short track ovals. You know, it's it's part of what I grew up doing in, in you know the Indy Nets or you know Indy Lights back in back in the day. You know? So it, it's definitely a, a mess. You know, some of the super speedways and you know, the Indy Five Hundred is the Indy Five Hundred. It's a fantastic event, amazing event, and, and one of the toughest races in the world. But you know, to, to get back to these short tracks, and I think when I won the 500 in 08, you know, you do the medium tour and you come straight here to Milwaukee and, and, and continue uh, racing at one of the toughest tracks uh, possible. So, you know, for me, it's, it's um, yeah, these tracks are, they're fun, they're hard, but it's, it's a lot of it is the history. And, and uh, I think the more you do it, uh, you really understand, you know, what it's all about. And for Roger, just a general scheduling question. No Texas stop next year. The one Indy road course, what went into the decision? Obviously, you add something, you have to take something away, but what went into those decisions? I think the, uh, we'd love to have the Texas event, but you know, the television with the Olympics has really changed the scheduling for sports across all different aspects of, of sports. And uh, so we had we couldn't get together with Texas due to a NASCAR event, but also the fact that uh, we could come here and add two events gave us one more oval, which as I talked about earlier, and you know, Scott talked about <clears throat> the, the reason we cover the competition. Just think about it, we have 27 cars we've had, we've had less than one second between the qualifying. Think about it, it was not that way in the past. Right, Scott, in the past, we had big changes. It's so competitive. When you see these guys get out of the cars uh, after qualifying, and to me, uh, for us to be able to add the ovals to the schedule even made us a, a much stronger series, I felt. And, you know, we'll be back in Texas, hopefully, in another year, but this Olympics really kind of threw a rock in the middle of our, all the scheduling of sports right now. Roger, quick question. I know you've had great days here, and I know that there was one year where Elio's wing literally collapsed when he was leading. What, what is it about this place that some drivers like Scott have told me, like it almost is a little bit like a road course, but yet it's an oval, but it's so challenging, and, and you love so much about it. Unfortunately, I'm not a driver, so I can't do it to you <laughs> lap by lap, but uh, you know, these guys are committed. You know, we have real athletes driving these cars today. I mean, these guys are in shape, and uh, you have to be just to hang on. And we don't have power steering or anything. You know, some of the other types of sports have power steering. This is all about the driver themselves. And, I think uh, the flat surface in one and two, and then a little bit of banking over in three and four. It's just a you're you're almost will run the qualifier wide open, and and I I can't uh, tell you what I think the speed will be, but it's going to be amazing. And uh, it look it's a place, and it's the other thing, the people in the grandstands can see the whole racetrack. That's another thing today. You know they they feel like they're in the car, they can see what's going on. It's not coming by. You know every. Uh, minute and a half or what it might be so I think the visibility the fact that we can have entertainment for our corporate sponsors we're going to bring more visitors into the state which is obviously one of the key reasons that the governor is given their commitments here and we can partner with the state fair board and get the benefit of their relationships you know with the baseball team and all the other sports we have here you know in the state so to me it all came together fans in the stands, that's the next thing. We're, we're excited to uh, partner with the State Fair Board, certainly to see the commitment by the governor this morning to uh, to have this race here. It's going to be great. Uh, I remember coming back here in the 70s, uh, back after coming out of Indianapolis, the next stop, obviously, was the Milwaukee Mile. Think about Rex May 150 at the time we've been here. But uh, to me, with what we have here, the State Fair and what they've done here, it's been amazing. We're able to use the convention center for our big sponsors. So, to me, and maybe some music on Saturday night, we don't know yet, but uh, we've got a lot of good things in our hands. What took so long to get back to Milwaukee? It's been about eight years. Well, I think uh, just as all sports, you know, we had a schedule, and uh, as you know, we took over the series here a couple of years ago, and so we looked the way we could really change the, the look of our series by having more oval events. You know, Milwaukee was certainly in our eye, and I think this gave us a chance getting together with the mayor's office, the governor, what have you, put it together where we could have a commitment for the track. The track needs to be upgraded to a certain extent. The latest safety standards which are being done by, by the fair, and this will give us a chance to compete here and uh, have a great race. How long the commitment is this? Saying, we want to come back. Obviously, you know what fans say, you know what message board, you know what that says, but internally inside the race teams, inside the batteries, like, 
How long have you heard we want to go back to the water? Well, I think the fact, number one, <clears throat> they understand the TV will be great. So we get great visibility for not only the drivers themselves, the sponsors, and certainly for the sport. But the drivers love this kind of racing. When you think about qualifying, you know, I think we had it some of the ovals within one second. We had 27 cars. You just don't see that in other types of sports. So uh, it'll showcase that. We can run into next year. You know, again, that weekend will give us a chance to really show young talent coming up through the series, which I think is very important. We do that so well on the road. Is there any thoughts of going back to the traditional weekend? No, we looked at all the different uh, weekends available. When you think about the Olympics this year, it made a big difference from the standpoint of television and our schedule. So to me, that was probably one of the guiding lights we have. But look, I think Labor Day weekend will be great. The, the fair board feels that's a good time for us. And I think we've executed well at other tracks on Labor Day weekend. So this should just be a carbon copy, hopefully. Roger, I've been here since 96, and I've seen the public and private partnership kind of ebb and flow with this place. I just asked the governor, what's different? And he said, Roger Penske. So are you the savior? What's that? I, I don't think I'm the savior. My name might be on the door, but it's all the people that we have with an IndyCar, and certainly Indianapolis Motor Speedway, that want to make this race a real hit. And I think that we can do that. It's right around the corner from Indy. We'll have our team here. they got a great team, by the way, with Sherry Black uh, at the uh, head of the uh, CEO of the State Fair Board. So, to me, with the track being brought up to the latest standards, you know, with the interest in IndyCar, and think about it, 27 cars on a mile track is going to be amazing. We've seen it in Iowa. We've seen it in other tracks so far in St. Louis. And certainly, obviously, on the big old in Texas. So, we're here. I mean, we're committed. We're invested in the series as a company. I'm certainly invested personally, and I think when the governor shakes your hand, when the state forum does the same, I think we have a real winner. How long? Improvements still need to be made. I mean, I know improvements have been made. But what well, I, th I think done? there's going to be some work on the pit lanes, some work on the track. There's still some safety barriers and walls that have to be completed, but it's all in the plans that have been committed. And by the way, the state has committed that to make this bring it to a, what I call a world-class facility. How long a commitment is it to have Milwaukee on the schedule? Is it just for next year, or is this a multi-year type Well, deal? let me say this. We're not coming here for one year. I, mean, I hope it's not multi-year. I think it's hopefully it's for decades, because it should be on the schedule. It was for how many years when you think about back in 39, the first, first race here, because it shows off the cars we have. In fact, it helps us for the Indy 500, because drivers can run on ovals like this and then understand what it's like to compete in a track like Indy. So I think it's all part of the partnership. What would be success for you here, Roger? Well, success would be to have 30,000 people here fill the grandstands and have the corporate sponsorship at the highest level and produce the best racing they've seen here in many years. Do you have to have 30,000? Well, we don't have to have 30,000, but you always have to set a bar. It's how fast you want to qualify. My qualifying speed for people would be 30,000. <laughs> But uh, the countdown is on. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.